This is Dr. Mozam Tewana here and in today's class we are going to talk about third generation high speed downlink packet access which is also known as the HSDPA. <coughs> now in third generation release R99 the maximum data rate that a user or user equipment can experience uh, was 384 kbps but in the case of three third generation release 5 which is also known as the hsdpa this downlink data rate of a single user uh, can be increased up till 14.4 mbps so in order to achieve this high data rate basically some new technologies were introduced and what are these new technologies fast scheduling adoptive modulation and coding hybrid automatic repeat request or harq and these new technologies were implemented in some new channels that were introduced in the hsdpa technology and the new transport channel that was introduced in the hsdpa was high speed downlink share channel and uh, basically it was a set of channels and uh, and these channels has had has have higher data high data rate and one such channel can be shared by many users in the downlink and when this high speed downlink shared channel was mapped on a is mapped on a physical channel the physical channel has a fixed fixed spreading factor of 16 this means that we very well know that if the spreading factor is lower then the data rate is higher and if the spreading factor is higher the data rate is lower so when this channel has a data rate of uh, has a spreading factor of 16 then that means that this channel has high data rate and the purpose of this channel is to take advantage of the good channel conditions uh, in order to uh, explain you this let me give you an example for example in this case in this example there is one high speed downlink shared channel which is being shared by four users and for example this user equipment has good channel conditions this means that the snr that this user is uh, getting is better than the other users so in that case what this node b can do it can assign up till 15 codes 15 cdma codes to this user equipment so that means that for this two milliseconds the other users are not getting any codes but this user is getting 15 codes so on one hand these other users are not interfering with this user or user equipment uh, as that means that the snr of this user equipment would further improve and furthermore as 15 codes have been assigned to this uh, user equipment so for this two millisecond the data rate of uh, this user uh, equipment would increase a lot now for the for example for the next two millisecond if this user equipment has good channel conditions or it is receiving good snr these 15 codes can then be assigned to this user equipment and in this way the node b is scheduling the users one thing that i want to mention that it is also possible that we assign eight codes to this user equipment and seven codes to this user equipment for example if there is a case when the data rate requirement of these user equipments is moderate it's not very high so in that case there is no point of assigning uh, all the codes to a single user equipment they can be shared uh, in a variety of ways one another thing that i want to point out is that in the case of r99 the minimum uh, uh, transmission time interval or tti was 10 millisecond that means that the minimum time that was required to transmit a transport block or frame was 
10 millisecond time to transmit a uh, data block at the transport layer but in the case of release 5 this minimum transmission time interval was reduced to 2 millisecond and the purpose of reducing this transmission time interval to 2 millisecond was to quickly take the advantage of the changing channel conditions uh, because as we know that in the case of mobile channel the channel conditions change very quickly because for example if a mobile is moving in a car its channel is changing very quickly so we want to take advantage of that and we want to schedule uh, those user equipments uh, which uh, which will result in the higher data rate in the downlink now next question that comes to our mind that how does node b know that a user a user equipment has good channel condition or a user equipment has bad channel conditions so basically each user equipment is measuring the quality of snr that it is receiving and then it is sending uh, feedback to the node b on the uplink channel uh, about it and this feedback is sent back in the form of channel quality feedback or channel quality indicator so each of these mobile is sending the channel quality indicator to the node b so the node b can now decide based upon the channel quality indicator that which user equipments it needs to schedule and what data rate it can give to them Now we come to the adoptive modulation and coding. The purpose of adoptive modulation and coding is to increase the data rate of mobiles that are in good channel conditions and, uh, and the mobile that are already getting more uh, CDMA codes. Uh, we want to further achieve their data rate. And how we achieve their uh, higher data rate that is thanks to using the adoptive modulation and coding. So how this is done? Uh, first of all, we talk about the adjusting the code rate. The error correction codes that are used in 3G are turbo codes. And if uh, there is a mobile that is in bad channel conditions, for example, it is away from the base station this that means that we want a powerful error correction code to correct uh, the errors that are coming uh, in the communication between them so uh, what we will do for example uh, there is if uh, for one bit actually we will be sending four bits when one data bit passes through the encoder we get four bits so uh, these four bits are basically used at the receiver to correct the error. So for one beta, uh, data bit, actually we are uh, sending three extra bits. So we have a code rate of one by four. That means we have a lower code rate and we are sending more extra bits in a frame. So the data rate becomes lower. But if this mobile moves near to the base station and its channel conditions improve, what we can do is that we can puncture the two bits okay so in that case for one bit we are sending two extra bits so the code rate improves to one by two or uh, increases to one by two uh, so as there are less bits for error correction in the frame so we can increase the uh, bit the data bits so good channel conditions we use a higher rate for example 3 by 4 poor channel condition we use a lower bit for for example 1 by 4 the second thing that we do is uh, is we adjust the modulation scheme because it is a combination of modulation and coding in the case of 3g r99 or 3g release 99 we had uh, we only had the qpsk modulation scheme we only had the QPSK modulation scheme and in QPSK we know that there are four symbols and we are sending two bits per symbol 
but in the HSTPA, we also introduced 16 QAM and 16 QAM, you have 16 symbols and per symbol we are sending 4 bits. Okay. So if the mobile is away from the node B, uh, it has, this does not have very good channel condition. In that case, we can, we will use QPSK. We are sending 2 bits per symbol. But, uh, but if that mobiles move near to the base station and it has good channel conditions uh, then in that case we use 16 quam because in that in this case uh, using 16 quam we will not get uh, more errors we will not get too much errors but if we used 16 quam in poor channel condition we would get more errors and whole point of using 16 QAM will be useless. So in good channel conditions, when we are using 16 QAM, in that case, we are uh, sending four bits per symbol. So compared to the QPSK, our data rate would be double. So here, using the modulation, we are increasing the data rate and we are also adjusting the code rate in order to increase the data rate. Now we come to another mechanism that is actually used to uh, used in the 3G and it is known as the hybrid ARQ and those who are familiar with the uh, OSI model it is uh, a mechanism of second layer of the OSI model. So in the traditional ARQ what happened was uh, that when a block is sent from a transmitter for example it is node b in this in this example and user equipment is the receiver and if there is an error in the block and how does uh, the receiver or user equipment know that there is error in the block actually there are crc bits in the block which are basically uh, which in uh, which are used by user equipment to know that there is an error in the block during the transmission or not. But if there is an error in the transmission, so this block would be discarded by the UE and UE would send a not acknowledgement to the block, block uh, to the user node B. And then node B would again resend this packet and if it is uh, correctly received, uh, acknowledgement would be sent. That was the traditional ERQ. But in the case of hybrid ARQ is uh, in the hybrid ARQ what happened was that actually this block that we uh, previous block that you received in error we do not discard that block rather we keep this block but we also uh, the receiver also sends the transmitter uh, a not acknowledgement to actually resend that block so we have the original block that uh, we received and then we have its copy that is received but uh, if both of them are incidentally in error then we can combine the information from these two blocks and we can get the block without errors okay so uh, this is the concept of hybrid arq that combining the information from these two blocks actually we can correct uh, the error in the block even when the, the both of these blocks are in error. There are two types of hybrid ARQ. One is the chase combining. In the chase combining the next block that is sent it is the same block. It means that uh, there is no difference between the block that we received previously and the next block. In the incremental redundancy what we do is that the next block is basically coded differently, means uh, different type of error correction codes are applied to it. So uh, we get a diversity in these two blocks. And now if we combine them, the possibility of correcting errors in these uh, two block increases. So these are the two types of uh, ARQ that are uh, used, chase combining and incremental redundancy. Now using the combination of different modulation schemes, coding rates, forward error correction coding rates, and uh, CDMA codes, we can get different data rates. For example, if we are using QPSK, two bits per symbol, uh, we get two bits per symbol, uh, and we use a coding rate of one by four, and we, we have five CDMA codes are assigned to a user equipment, we get a data rate of 600 kbps. But if 15 codes are assigned uh, to this user in the same condition, we get a downlink data rate of 1.8 mbps for this user. Uh, but if the channel, channel conditions are ideal, 
and we are using 16 QAM uh, along with the coding rate of 1. We are not sending any extra bits and we are assigning 15 codes to a user then we can get the 14.4 mbps downlink data rate and this is the maximum theoretical data rate a user can get in the hsdpa now uh, in order to uh, implement these technology uh, these new concepts the new channels that are introduced in HDC, hsdpa are dtch uh, tra which is a traf uh, dedicated traffic channel, high speed downlink shared channel. It, this is a transport channel that we discussed earlier in the lecture. And this high speed downlink shared channel is then mapped into high speed uh, physical downlink shared channel. This is the physical channel uh, on which this transport channel is mapped and it has a spreading factor of 16. Now this is a data channel and uh, in order for this data channel to function properly we need the control channels. The control channels that we have is the high speed dedicated physical control channel uh, with a spreading factor of 256 that is used in the uplink and we have the high speed shared control channel with a spreading of factor of 128 in the downlink okay so these two control channels are used along with the physical channel for the proper operation of the uh, of the um, hsdpa so how does this operation take place for example uh, these are the two mobiles that are assigned to a high speed downlink shared channel so each mobile is basically measuring the SNR that it is receiving and its quality is reported back to node B using the channel quality indicator. And how does the user equipment inform the node B? It is through the high speed uh, dedicated physical control channel which is in the uplink. And based upon the channel quality indicator, Node B decides that which mobile to schedule for the data, uh, for the uh, schedule for the next two millisecond, so that that user equipment gets the data. So, uh, in or, for example, for the next two millisecond, this is the user equipment that is scheduled. It is given 15 codes for the next two milliseconds or the next TTI. So this node B will inform this user equipment about its decision using the downlink uh, channel, which is the high speed shared control channel. And after that, the downlink data would be transmitted using the high speed downlink shared channel and uh, which is uh, and which is this channel which is a transport channel and which is mapped on the high speed physical downlink shared channel or i can call it as the high speed physical downlink shared channel so once this move user equipment gets the data during that two millisecond it would inform the node b about the good reception uh, are the bad reception of that data. For example, there may be errors in it. Uh, using the high speed downlink, uh, using the high speed dedicated physical control channel, which is a uplink control channel. So this is the operation of uh, HSDPA. So uh, thank you for being patient with me. Uh, if you want to leave any comment, you are welcome to do, do that and hope to see you in some next video.